And we made it in this time. Hello, everyone. Welcome to game number three of our very first Jupiter's Forge IO tournament. Blues, Andreas G. Morgan, and Zorbaz are going to be our players today. And Phil Athanik still here with us doing some commentary. Yeah, today we the first time a scientist has shown up. We have scavengers, scientists, nomads, and elites. Uh, no expansives. There is a very good-looking scientist spot right down here. Basalt and ice all right next to each other. Uh, you also could go for an elite right in that corner. It's to the southeast of the colony as there's a bunch of silicon. The only thing missing really from there is aluminum. The nomad's going to take the silicon. Andreas B taking it for 30,000 in debt. Where is his second? It's over oh, just in the middle of everything else. Right, but near this high, very high, very high. Mm-hmm. Zorbaz founding on that carbon that was just to the north of that potential scientist spot. Blues went for the scientist, going for that basalt and taking two aluminum. And then Morgan is left with the leftovers. Um, Which aren't great. No, they are not great. He decides to found I mean, for a scientist on iron ice. I guess that's a okay fourth founding location. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, obviously not what you're after. You like to have the basalt as a scientist. Of course, scientists are the only class that can build anything but a basalt platform. Anything that's not a basalt platform on top of basalt. But they can only build something that uses a basalt resource. So nuclear plants, steel mills, glass kilns, electronics factory. factory. That's it. And that's it, yes. That should do it. Scientists also can extract off of ice yes, so they can put the water, water processors. processor straight on ice um, or, or glass kilns you know for slightly controversial change buff to the scientists to say the least yeah that would i think that says the least possible about it but that's that's accurate but it is a, it is a change that's in right now and well Soren himself has been enjoying playing Scientist on IO, and I think the only time I've seen him not do it is is when, when it wasn't available. Right, so, which might tell you the state of the scientist, ice scientist balance. But I we'll tell leave you that science is pretty good right now. But we'll leave it at that. We'll get back to the game that we have at hand. <laughs> Andreas, despite having a lot of debt, is at HQ2. Zorbaz also keeping right on track with his scavenger. Zorbaz has an interesting carbon split. It's found. Um, unfortunately, I can't see the carbon, if he crushed any carbon. If he did, then he might have wanted to found just a little bit to the west. I don't believe, because I, I did check these seeds out beforehand and at least make sure I, I did skip over a few that were particularly egregious, but that particular spot did not have any adjacency for the very okay. high. So then he so did I, the, I think he was okay. He did the best he could. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Fortunately for him, um, what he's going to want to do and not doing it yet is a crime. He needs to goon this high elemental quarry because scavengers on IO don't deplete, don't diminish resources. Mm -hmm. But there are nukes. Nukes diminish scavenger resources just fine. Absolutely. They do a fantastic job of it, as it turns out. And so oh. I think you're absolutely correct that that should be gooned in order to protect it because... It is no more safe from being not to trace than a high tile is. And it's potentially a very, very tempting hit over here. Knock it down to a medium and then knock it from there straight down to a trace is something I would be very interested in doing. Oh, yes. Very much so. Uh, we have three players at HQ3. The Nomad and the Scavenger were first. Blues is coming up second, doing quite well on this ice basalt science found. And Morgan, unfortunately, is struggling just a little bit with his scientist spot over at HQ2. Still needs another 13k for the upgrade, so it's going to be just a little bit before he catches up with the rest of our players. Certainly. He does have those nuclear plants down, which may help out. He's only got 12,000 debt left to pay down. Power is still doing okay. Where is this mutiny from? Yeah, that's what I thought. Blues did get a mutiny onto that geothermal plant of Andreas G's, which means Blue's also paying down his debt very successfully, paying down 400 a second right now. 
And so he's just looking to be in an absolutely fantastic spot moving forward in this game. Though Andreas G is level 4. Andreas G level 4 only in single A debt despite having $50,000 in debt. Still has his other geotherm, so he's just about almost covering all his life support costs. Still needs to get a few more farms up before he can cover everything just yet. Two claims available for Andreas. Andreas is playing that early scavenger I mean, sorry, early Nomad found about as good as you can with the amount of debt so far. Yeah, he's managed to keep that in check, so that was very, very good. Very, very well done on his part. Does need to give his farm a friend, and it's coming down now. Might even consider getting down another one. Could even transition this metal mine into something else if you would like to. Doesn't need that iron yeah, for anything for him, in particular. Pipeline leak, I believe, affects all liquids at the colony, so water and mm -hmm. fuel and oxygen... Just yeah, water, fuel, and oxygen went up a lot, which does be good for his farms. No, but Blues is very happy with that uh, I water for on ice right there. 216 a second each. Ooh, yeah, those water processors are doing some work. Also has a couple ion collectors ready to go. Well, we're just flying through this claim. It was bouncing Ooh, back and forth between everybody. For Andreas, he already has 66k. I'm not not sure That's a lot. yeah that bumped him all the way down to C. that was too much i think i agree with you i mean power is down at 30 dollars a piece right now he does not have any good way to really combat this debt and what did he commit it to looks like it got paired up with another claim and it's just going to be heading into ion collectors which are fine they're perfectly acceptable buildings mm -hmm. but well, i do question if it was worth thirty-two thousand debt well what andreas needs to do right now is well first of all find some money because he doesn't have a lot of cash on hand find a way to get money and then maybe look to pick off morgan if he can if andreas can start getting some cash flow in and he can pick up morgan as morgan makes an upgrade since morgan's lagging just a little bit that might be able to keep his stock price high enough for his debt not to matter. That could help him out quite a bit. I did like Andreas G going ahead and making good use of return acclaim. This is something that players aren't necessarily aggressive enough about, in my opinion. But in this case, Andreas G, I do believe he had committed to three aluminum tiles early in the game. He's just like, I don't know what to do with these. I don't know where to make money. I'm just going to gather in a ton of aluminum because I know I need aluminum eventually. Yep. And now, now that aluminum, well, he has an 800 stockpile and aluminum's worth nothing. So just going to return a couple of those aluminum claims, moves on into water processors very cleanly. That is one of those, one of the ways that nomads can upgrade even faster than scavengers. The only problem with it is it puts a really big target on your head. It absolutely does, as it turns out. No matter how much you preach that you got to check optimizations, you got to be aware of what buildings people have up, you got to know what patents are flying around, all kinds of things like that. The thing everybody pays attention to the most is what is that number next to your name? How big is it and how scary is it? So always looking, dangerous to fly through upgrades. Looking at the patents right now, Zorbaz was the first into a patent lab, picked up liquid batteries and nanotech, two decent pickups for him. Uh, Blues right now researching synthetic meat has financial instruments queued up. Zorbaz going into transparent aluminum, another good pick for Zorbaz. Still hasn't gooned that uh, high elemental quarry. Zorbaz, please. But hasn't been here. punished for it. No, so. no, no, but nobody, nobody's bothered to check. There are three I mean, six K goons. So. Yeah, I, I, I do have to question not having gone ahead and protected that tile. And I do have to question not having gone ahead and tried to attack that tile. Although I will say that Zorbaz, his number isn't all that scary. It's only a four. Meanwhile, Andreas G at a five and Blues, meanwhile, he's at four too. With the but, same amount of cash as Zorbaz. Yeah. He's got cash on hand. He's starting to get aggressive against Andreas G. He has that patent lab online that's picked up mm. financial instruments and Zorbaz should do the meat. same thing that Blues is doing. Buy into Morgan right now while Morgan has no money to defend himself. Instead, he takes the upgrade. Yeah, he got to that upgrade. Now, Andreas G, very close to being able to defend himself, but it doesn't look like he's going to manage to pull it off. He had some money evaporate. Just at that last moment, Blues manages to get the buy done. So he's got himself a nice little nomad picked up and already blues looking to be in a great position to go ahead 
and pick up what I believe would be his third win of the day. We haven't seen him yet. He's been very, very successful off stream thus far. Yeah, Blues uh, spent a good three hours or so yesterday experimenting on stream with a bunch of different founds and founding locations on IO. So, not su and he's all one of our top players on the leaderboard. Say, and he's Blues, as it turns out. <laughs> yeah, that hasn't changed. Not not surprised. Um, Blues did lose to Relic, I believe, on his stream. So it shows you on IO anything is possible while people are still figuring out how to play the ever-changing beta stats. So... Um, I do find this interesting, by the way, that Zorbass has picked up a couple of Basalt platforms. Not a normal thing to see for a scavenger, but I do have to admit, I don't think he has access to great silicon. He's got okay silicon, but not, not particularly good silicon, so maybe I do understand it. Moving into at least one basalt platform as a as a scavenger makes sense, because that way you have some silicon, you have some uranium if you want it. And in his case, right. it's not very far. Moving into double is probably overkill, simply because he's a scavenger and doesn't have very many claims. Yeah, let's check on that and see very quickly. Black market. So Blues has picked up four claims. Oh, that's definitely... On top of everything else. On top of being an ice scientist. Why not four claim ice scientist? Yeah, Morgan got two, which might help explain some of his sluggishness to get off the ground early. He got two very quickly. Only spent 5,000. Zorbez spent together. more than Blues to only get two. Yeah, very, very late to those right, claims, claims, it would appear. Not where you want to be as a scavenger, really not using any kind of black market bonus this game. I mean, Blues has been the most active, but it's been a very quiet game when it comes to black market this time around. Andreas right now is a sub for Blues, making Blues $200 a second. But has more cash have, than anyone else. I said has more cash than anyone else, and you can kind of see how... If Andreas was able to survive building a space elevator, might have been a good choice for him. Launches our 49k profit for oxygen. Absolutely. That sounds like a very nice space elevator to me, personally. Oxygen only at $69 for the moment. And frankly, uh, oxygen wasn't too bad to figure out this game. Pretty much everybody was able to get, at minimum, a triangle of ice available. Yeah, everybody has one. And so Oxygen should stay a fairly simple launch most of the time. Extra claims for everybody. Who does that help out the most, I wonder? It feels like it has to be Blues, because he kind of gets two extra claims, right? His and Andreas's? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Blues Blues definitely in the best spot here. Zorbaz, unfortunately, didn't. And this is where Zorbaz also was in our recent New Players Tournament. So this is where you can see just the experience coming into play for blues um, Zorbez didn't buy into Andreas at all which would definitely have been a good idea he didn't attack Morgan when Morgan had no money um, so this is just going to be I think a really easy win for blues now Morgan is going to defend himself yeah Morgan will will be a roadblock here but I can't see these players doing much beyond that no, I'd expect blues to Blues might consider selling out of Morgan and finishing the stock purchase on Andreas, as Andreas right now is making almost $500 a second, and that's only going to go up as the game goes on. That's definitely a possibility there. He Or Blues does seem to be making a lot of money, so maybe he'll just stay aggressive against Morgan. Yeah, I would be tempted to just sit in Morgan for the time being. I mean, Zorbaz... Zorbaz is a little bit of a concern, but Zorbaz also has $150,000 of debt, and... Mm -hmm. Well, alright, Blues is just gonna buy everything. He doesn't care. So, show me the stock. That's all Blues wants to see right now. Making over 1000 a second on Andreas G at this point. Yep, he did decide to uh, buy into Andreas after Zorbaz is like, Hey, I want that. Blues is like, Nah, you, nah, you don't get that, Zorbaz. So, um, it's... it's yeah, just Blues just in a dominating dominating position and it's kind of hard to tell how much of this is blues being blues and how much of it is the ice scientist being really good 
it feels like it might be a combination of these things, but let's be honest. EMP is at 4.5. Mm-hmm. Newtony is at 3. I'm just, I'm sensing just some lack of aggression against the strong player. Despite the fact that he's a scientist and those EMPs aren't going to be particularly effective, it still is the tool that you have to fight back into this game, but uh, it's really not looking good for Morgan and Zorbaz at this point. No, no, it is not. Um, Morgan did get up to HQ5, caught up with everybody else, uh, just showing that um, a normal scientist is just a little bit slower than a basalt scientist. Yeah, and it is basalt making a pretty big difference there, but also Morgan's ice patch just not nearly as big, big. as Blue's was. Mm -hmm. Couldn't the use both the water processors it. and the solar condensers in particular. That's going to be the biggest difference. And Blue's Basalt Patch was pretty much the minimum in a lot of ways you want to see for a scientist that had those five tiles. You got three for the steel and two for either nuclear reactors or, you know, those nuclear plants or those glass kilns. But he's been he's been doing a good job with the just barely enough patch that he has. Yeah, it turns out when you get uh, four claims for 42k on the black market, it doesn't really matter that your scientist bot isn't as good as it could be. Blues does have the That's buy true. on Morgan if he so chooses. Probably uh, just going to wait for Zorbaz. Yeah, Play at safe. this point it doesn't really matter. Also is the buy on Zorbaz. We're just going to wait for Blues to finish up the game. Like most of our FFAs. In like two seconds. We do use time as a tiebreaker, which is why Morgan is not surrendering, even though the writing is on the wall. Certainly is. Blues is just going to finish selling out of some of his own stock here. He'll be able to bring Morgan down very quickly. Once again, Soul 4, 2840. A victory there for Blues. Really just unchallenged that game. Yeah, unchallenged. Zorbaz did have a point in time where he could have done a, quite a similar path that Blues did when Morgan upgraded and only had 5k on hand. Zorbaz could have bought into Morgan, had a, had a scavenger with a scientist sub, but that was, would have been pretty good. Even if it is a subpar scientist, still a scientist. Yeah, it could have definitely been something. And Andreas G, he was very close to holding on at least and yeah, slowing down Blues, was... but just really seemed to struggle starting at HQ4 and, and finding where to make money that game, whereas that was something Blues had no trouble with whatsoever. Yeah, Andreas probably just a little bit too greedy with that 30k found. Um, I've been finding, and I don't know if this is simply because IO has a wealth of founding locations because of the science ice potential, or if it's just because that IO is so different that people have been waiting very late to found compared to Mars or Ceres. Yeah, I have noticed that to be true often. Uh, Blue says this was his first science game on IO. Well, Blue, that's because it was the first game that scientists were available this tournament. <laughs> oh, that's true. That is true. Yeah, a smattering of optimizations for Blues. I don't even know if those mattered at all, though. They might have accelerated the game finishing, I guess, a little bit, but realistically, that one felt done when, when Blues had picked up Andreas and everybody else was still kind of struggling to find their place in the game. Zorbez might have spent too much money on patents, too. He has a lot of them. Now, yeah. Let's go look and see how much... Yeah, Chems did spike pretty high, up to 420. So... That might be just somewhere else. I mean, Zorbaz, when you do watch this replay, you did pretty well this game. Just a few things to clean up. I think I agree with you. Maybe just a little bit much on patents. He did. He was fortunate not to have gotten nuked on that quarry in yeah, particular. Yeah, very, very fortunate. But yeah, it did feel like there were maybe just a few things to clean up here and there. Some other thing for Andreas, just kind of lagging out. And then Morgan never really got started this game. Just last to found. Couldn't find a spot that he was happy with it seemed and, and that caused some problems yeah there's for this game indeed i'm really i'm still looking around right now i haven't found a fourth spot that i would enjoy founding in honestly i probably if i was stuck in that fourth spot i likely would have taken this aluminum patch with some ice in the midst of it over in the west you've got iron not too far away basalt not too far away it's not great but it's something functional at least yeah the question is what would you take that with because you'd 
prefer to found an expansive there, but expansive was expansive available? I don't even available. It was either that was one of those, maybe none of those. No, none of those were available. So it would have had to be elite, which definitely wouldn't have been comfortable. Yeah. So, because I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was what scavenger scientist nomad elite. Is that what we had this time around? That's what I think was the case. On the other hand, blues, it felt like blues got this scientist spot very cheap, quite late, quite late, very, very cheaply. Yeah. And so that may have been an error from just everybody that game starting debt of zero. That means two people founded before blues picked up his scientist. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, yeah, blues, but the that out there. one that was worth 30 K. Uh, I not would probably do that. So maybe just a little bit, not quite judging correctly exactly how valuable those locations were. 